Hello, and welcome to the first video in the A-Level Biology series. Today we're going to be talking about biological molecules. All life on Earth shares a common chemistry within their cells. The cells of all living things are made of four important types of organic or carbon-based molecules. These are proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. These are essential to a living organism's function and survival on a molecular level. During this video, we will discuss the key characteristics of proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. We will cover nucleic acids later in the course. Key terms we will cover in the discussion of biological molecules are monomers, this is the basic unit of a polymer. Monomers bind to other monomers to form repeating chain molecules in a process called polymerization. Polymers are large molecules composed of many repeating subunits and macromolecules, which are large molecules with specific 3D structures and functions, such as proteins, which consist of polymers of amino acids. First, let's begin with proteins. Proteins are large biomolecules and perform a vast array of important functions within living organisms. For example, enzymes, which catalyze metabolic reactions, antibodies, which are involved in the immune response, structural proteins such as keratin in hair and collagen in connective tissue, and transport proteins such as haemoglobin which transport oxygen in red blood cells. Proteins are large molecules made up of polymers of amino acids. So what are amino acids and how do they give us our proteins? Amino acids are the primary building blocks of proteins. They have the same general structure consisting of an amine group, a carboxyl group, and a variable side group referred to as the R group. The R group of amino acids is specific to the amino acid and infers specific properties and functions. The chemistry of the R group influences how amino acids interact with its environment and other amino acids. Dipeptides are formed when two amino acids are combined by a peptide bond. Polypeptides are formed when two amino acids join together. Amino acids are linked together through a condensation reaction between the hydroxyl group of one amino acid and a hydrogen from the amine group of a nearby amino acid. The reaction results in the loss of water and the formation of a peptide bond. This reaction is reversed in digestion in a reaction called hydrolysis. There are 20 different amino acids found in nature. We have 11 non-essential and 9 essential amino acids. Non-essential amino acids can be produced in the human body and essential amino acids are not produced by the body and need to be obtained through our diet. The only difference between these are their R groups. After the polypeptide chains are synthesized, the polypeptide undergoes multiple stages of highly specific folding. This folding results in primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary protein structures. So first the primary structure, this is the initial sequence of amino acids bonded by peptide bonds in a long polypeptide chain. The secondary structure, formed from hydrogen bonds between nearby amino acids, between the amine group of one amino acid to the carboxyl group of another within the polypeptide chain. This interaction causes folding of the chain resulting in either an alpha helix structure or a beta pleated sheet. The tertiary structure, arises from further coiling and folding of the polypeptide, this time resulting from interactions between the variable R groups, giving the protein a complex three-dimensional structure. The types of interactions between the R groups can be hydrogen bonds, disulfide bonds, ionic bonds, and polar interactions. And this is the final protein structure of proteins consisting of a single polypeptide chain. The quaternary structure of a protein results from the interaction of multiple polypeptide chains held together by bonds. For example, haemoglobin contains four polypeptide chains in its quaternary structure, two of which are alpha helix and two are beta pileated sheets. All proteins are characterized into two broad groups of proteins, globular and fibrous. Globular proteins are spherical in shape and are arranged so that they're hydrophobic or water-hating amino acids are tucked inside the protein and their hydrophilic or water-loving amino acids are exposed on the outside. This arrangement means the proteins are water-soluble and can be transported easily between cells. This is important for proteins such as enzymes, hormones and transport proteins, which need to be transported around the body. 
However, these types of proteins are sensitive to changes in environmental conditions. They can lose stability and unravel in a process known as denaturation in response to changes in pH and temperature from optimal levels. This can be highly dangerous and can have severe impacts on cellular activity and overall health. Fibrous proteins are long and thin proteins. Their primary structures consist of repetitive sequences of amino acids. Fibrous proteins are highly stable, strong and insoluble. These types of proteins are less sensitive to changes in pH and temperature than globular proteins and hence tend to be structural proteins, providing support to the cell. Examples of fibrous proteins are collagen, keratin and elastin. Now we will move on to carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the most abundant biological molecules, all containing carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Sugars are examples of carbohydrates. Long chains of sugar molecules are known as polysaccharides. The individual subunits of polysaccharides are called monosaccharides. Some examples of monosaccharides are glucose, fructose and galactose. Two monosaccharides combine by condensation reaction to form disaccharides. Again, condensation reactions result in the loss of a water molecule and the formation of a new chemical bond. Two monosaccharides are joined by a glycosidic bond, forming a disaccharide. Examples of disaccharides are sucrose, which is a disaccharide of glucose and fructose, lactose, which is a disaccharide of glucose and galactose. A long chain consisting of multiple glycosidic bonds between monosaccharides is a polysaccharide. Glycogen, amylose and cellulose are polysaccharides, and polysaccharides can be linear or branched in structure. Starch and cellulose are examples of polysaccharides which are found in plants. Starch is a major energy store in plants and is broken down in plant cells to provide energy. Cellulose is a major structural component of primary cell walls. The glycosidic bond between sugar monomers can be broken down by hydrolysis to release the substituent subunits of the polysaccharide. A hydrolysis reaction is when water is used to break chemical bonds a key reaction in metabolism is called glycolysis, in which glycogen is broken down into glucose in the production of energy in the form of ATP for the cell. Finally, we are going to discuss lipids. Lipids are essential to survival and function in living organisms. Lipids are involved in the storage of energy and are the key building blocks of living cells. Without lipids in our cells, we will have no membranes, which would be a disaster. Lipids consist of repeating hydrocarbon units known as fatty acids. There are two types of fatty acids, saturated and unsaturated. Saturated fatty acids are when the carbon atoms within the fatty acids are bond to the maximum number of hydrogens and the carbon-carbon interactions are single bonds. Therefore, these form straight chains of fatty acids which can pack in tightly together forming a compact energy store. This gives the properties of high melting point and forming solids at room temperature. Unsaturated fatty acids are when carbon atoms within the fatty acids can form either double or triple bonds between other carbon atoms. This causes the chains to bend or kink, meaning they are less tightly packed. This gives unsaturated fatty acids a low melting point and they are more likely to be in liquid state at room temperature. Plants use unsaturated fatty acids as their energy store. Lipids do not contain fatty acids alone. They can contain other molecules such as alcohols and phosphates. Triglycerides, phospholipids and cholesterols are all types of lipid and have varied functions in living organisms. Triglycerides consist of a molecule of glycerol, the sugar alcohol and free fatty acids. Triglycerides are the main constituent of body fat in humans and animals. They have an important role as energy resources in metabolism and transporters of dietary fat. The long hydrocarbon chains of the fatty acids contain lots of chemical energy. Triglycerides are well suited for energy storage because they contain twice as much energy as carbohydrates. They are also insoluble in water so they can remain in the cell without affecting the water potential so they can be stored for long term. Phospholipids make up the bilayer of cell membranes of all living things. They consist of an internal tail 
of two long hydrophobic fatty acid chains and an external hydrophilic head consisting of a phosphate group and a glycerol molecule. The individual properties of the head and the tail groups of the phospholipid allows them to form a two-layer or bilayer cell membrane between two adjacent sheets of phospholipids. Cholesterol is a waxy, fat-like sterile produced by the liver. It is an important structural component of cell membranes. It helps to strengthen and increase the rigidity of the cell membrane by pushing the hydrophobic tails of phospholipids closer together within the membrane bilayer. So this concludes the video on biological molecules. I hope you enjoyed learning about these exciting, important molecules. For more condensed information on biological molecules talked about in this video, please watch some earlier videos in the course. We will see you again next week when we will be learning about transport systems in plants.